strip club DJs, what do you have to tell us? Only did it for a year. My lessons are more for future DJs. 1. Check the area around the stage at closing. Most nights you'll find at least $20. 2. If two dudes are talking shit and are about ready to throw down, turn the music up really loud. They'll have to hug to talk more shit to E. Cother. 3. If there is a boxing tournament in town and two teams show up, be careful, but one team has to go. Otherwise the place turns into a 1960s movie fight scene. 4. Pay is great, but you'll end up a deaf alcoholic. 5. Be careful about kicking somebody out in dead of winter. You might end up with the handle ice man. 6. I'd probably have more but it's all a big blur in my memory. My roommate was a DJ and I spent a lot of time hanging out with him in the booth. One night a dancer came in with a cup, saying a guy just paid her $100 to piss in a cup so he could drink it. She didn't wanna actually do it so she gave the cup to my friend who was not the least clean dude I've ever known, and he pissed in it instead and the dude drank it up and loved it. I guess the moral is dot don't fucking do that shit. I dated a stripper many years ago. Only saw her perform a couple of the times. One evening as she's about to start she stopped suddenly, walked up to me and said, Could you do me a favor and make sure my brother and his mates aren't watching please? Sure enough her brother and three of his friends were sitting at a table, has to ask security to escort them outside while she performed and let them back in afterward. Her brother was okay with it but his friends were pissed. So when I was in college one of my roommates was a cook at the strip club, and he used to have us come in on afternoon Tuesdays, Wednesdays so we could eat for free. The bouncers used to buy weed from us so they were cool with it as long as we didn't cause a scene. That food was on point always, probably ate more fried chicken in a strip club than I have anywhere else. Did it for over three years. Made more money from tip outs from the girls than I made from the club. Tip out was 10% of what the girls made. Most girls were honest. Some weeks I made more money than I make now. My girls were awesome, at least most of the time. It was an awesome time in life and I do mean awesome. Glad to be where I'm at in life now though. I used to be a waitress at a club. This particular club had a weekly amateur. Waitress dance night, and I was constantly being peppered to get up on stage and try it out. I kept saying no, as I wasn't interested in being a dancer. After like the third week of saying no, management started cutting my hours back and eventually just stopped putting me on the schedule as a waitress. All because I didn't want to be a dancer for them. DJed the singular smallest strip club in my city for one night once. This was maybe 10-13 years ago. I worked as a DJ for a company that did weddings and socials primarily, but they also employed the strip club DJ, and the regular guy was taking a weekend off, so they signed me up to fill one of his shifts. The DJ booth was located right in front of the dressing room for the dancers, to act as a deterrent for creeps trying to follow them. The girls would generally come down to the booth, from their rooms in the attached hotel and give me their short song list about 15 minutes before they start dancing, then get changed into costume and take the stage. Generally, this was a pretty easy job. Then one of the dancers missed her showtime. Then she missed her next dance. Generally had four dancers, would have a show every half hour. Shows were three songs long, except the headliner girl who got four songs, and her next after that. So. The bar manager told me it was my job to go get her from her room. I walk on up to the room, knock on the door, and the angriest little stripper I've ever seen rips the door open and glares at me. I just say hey, you've missed a couple dances, manager name, told me to come get you. She responded by telling me to fuck off and die, then threw a lamp at me. She showed up for her next dance all smiles and sunshine like she didn't even remember it happening. Also, the headliner that night tipped me out almost $30 in loonies. She didn't have to, she chose to, which was really cool, and also made me touch her boobs, because she wasn't happy with her implants and wanted me to give my input. They looked nice, but they were strangely hard, firm. I was in a club in, medicine hat maybe, it had a bar, club for a band, 
a strip club and living quarters for the bands and employees. There was an experienced woman working. She looked fantastic and could tell she knew what she was doing. Guy next seated next to me starts throwing loonies, a large Canadian coin worth one dollar, a little too hard. By the time I turned my head to him a bouncer picked him up out of his seat in a chokehold. It was equally quick as it was impressive. Looney Lober couldn't even touch his feet to the ground until he was literally thrown out the front door. Edit, Looney is a large one dollar coin in Canada that you shouldn't throw hard at people if they are stripping for you. Your shorter lap dance songs reminded me of this very mediocre story. First time I ever went to a strip club my buddies chipped in for a lap dance. Now I figured that similar to what you say that they just play the shortest one minute song to grab your $25 and then you gotta pay more. Literally 5 seconds into this lap dance I had to rock the hardest piss of my life. I literally couldn't fucking pay attention and at one time she was like slapping her pussy I'd call I know is that I really had to pee. I swear to fucking god this chick went through almost the entirety of the song that had already started and was like 10 seconds in and then they played another song and in total this experience lasted nearly 8 minutes. The songs would not end. It finally ends and she does a whole oh wow you really want me to put my clothes back on routine and I was sweating bullets. I probably looked like a fucking maniac like I was about to go jerk off in the bathroom cause I hauled ass from the back room to the pisser. Worked in a couple of higher end strip joints many, many years ago. One of the problems we had was dancers bringing boyfriends in. Most knew it was best to keep them out. But every once in a while one would get a new guy that would want to see what she was doing. Usually they would get a few drinks in them and it would go bad. Either they would fight with their girlfriend, or they would get pissed at a customer getting flirty and get into a fight. Or a mix of both. A night where a dancer would bring her BF up to meet me. It added an extra stress layer to the evening. I met a lot of very damaged people in that world. Victims of abuse, mental issues, coping with substances, a lot of well-intentioned, but very screwed up people. I worked at a gas station near a strip club so a few of the dancers would come in after their shift. One would come in regularly with her boyfriend who always seemed to be in a good mood. One time she asked him to pay for the snacks they were getting and he said, What? I gave you all my money at the club. It just seemed like a dumb way to spend money as a couple, basically reducing their collective income by giving the club a cut of what he makes. I met a lot of very damaged people in that world. Victims of abuse, mental issues, coping with substances, a lot of well-intentioned, but very screwed up people. Rings true. It's not that I disagree with the movement to make sex work more acceptable in principle or protecting sex workers rights or anything. But I've known more sex workers than I can count on one hand, maybe even two hands, and there's only one of them who maybe went into it on a healthy basis. There's a lot of people in that line of work who need help. Not a DJ but get a few casual shifts behind the bar at the mail review on busy weekends. The guys are gay, they have boyfriends already, in fact a few work together, and even if you had a chance, they have exactly zero time for you that you're not paying for between this job, their day job, rehearsals for the main shows and their insane workout schedules. That said, it's not uncommon for them to make an extra $300 off drunk chicks who really want the suck of their lollipop. Easy money is easy money, they're just not in it for the girls. My uncle is gay and was a stripper at mostly gay bars for years. He stripped with his partner they're no longer together, but are best friends. I remember they had a little gym and tanning bed in their apartment. It wasn't always great. But he got to travel around the U.S. performing at different bars, clubs, dance parties, pride festivals, and gay events. The interesting thing I learned that kind of relates to your story, is there were a few straight male strippers he worked with because there were more gay club gigs in our town than there were male reviews for straight women. Not a DJ but here's my best DJ strip club story. 
When we were 17 we used to go to the one strip club in SF that didn't card as the door. One night we were sitting there when a group of cops walked in. We immediately thought it was a raid and we were going to get arrested. Nope. They were followed by two EMTs who went straight to the back room. Five minutes later they came out with a man on a stretcher who definitely looked dead. Head lolled to the side, oxygen mask on. Clearly just had a heart attack or something. Everyone in the club is completely silent. Music is off. No dancer is on stage as we watch this man get wheeled out who just died in the worst way possible. We're sitting there looking at our feet when the DJ comes onto the mic. Says, that's right, the lap dances are that good and drops the music. Traveling stripper who used to be a porn actress came to the club and did a show. Before her final act a huge champagne glass looking thing was brought up on stage and filled with water. Her final act starts with her being in this this and moving to the music. Not only was this a strip bar it was also a totally nude one. So music is going I'm talking getting everyone hyped up when she lifts her hip up and squirts water out of her vagina. This girl was shooting streams of water about 6 feet out then I see guys going over and getting closer so they would be shot in the face with this vaginal spew. People are disgusting. I used to give strippers fake name responses and one time I went as part of a birthday party with people I didn't know well. The girl says, my name is Mercedes. What's your guy's names? I replied, oh hi, I'm Lexus. And the guy next to me says, and I'm Chauncey and then she snapped at us. Those aren't your real names. And never talked to us for the rest of the night. Chauncey didn't really talk to me for the rest of the night either. I was at a strip club on a Thursday celebrating my friend's divorce. She's gay and had never been to one. We were one of three tables in there for the majority of the night so the girls all hung out with us. One was being extra flirty with me and when she went to get on stage a bouncer came up to me and said dude, talk to her about tractors. Tell her you have a John Deere 460 inches or something along those lines. When she got back I was taking to my friends about the new tractor I just got and she lit up like a Christmas tree and went off about all the tractors her dad has any blah blah blah. She never asked me for a dance, gave me her number and we hung out a few times. She's a genuinely nice girl and a lot of fun but it just didn't lead anywhere. Shout out to those bouncer wingmen out there. Stripper here, one of my favorite DJs of all time was at a very high-end gentleman's club in West Palm. He was always very friendly, and always in a great mood. His name was Jimmy. Once a floor guy told me to watch his moods, and to try to notice the difference of when he was drinking his 5-hour energy shots. It turns out that inside the bottles was not 5-hour energy, but it was in fact his own mix of some kind of liquid and GHB. Yes. He would roofie himself, but only enough to have a good time. Everyone called it his Jimmy Juice. So many stories, but here's a random one that gave me the idea for a book title about the business. I had finished a day shift and was in the office with the bartender counting tips while a dancer slash entertainer slash stripper was tipping out. She was on the phone with someone and I could hear the night shift DJ calling her to the stage. She tried to get off the phone and seemed agitated that the person wasn't taking the hint. I then realized she was talking to her young, seven-ish daughter about getting close to coming home from work then she just said this look honey i've got to go mom has got to go on stage someday i'll write a book called mom has got to go on stage the life and times of a gentleman's club dj not a dj but i am a stripper and when i first started working the club that hired me had me make a list of female names since all their dancers had stage names well the names I had were all taken since over 800 girls work at that club. One of the managers at the club told me that I had better pick my own name. BC if they picked, you might not like what you get. Then he told me a story about a girl who couldn't decide a name and someone had suggested Abriva, the cold sore medication. And this poor girl used Abriva as her stage name for like two months before one of her customers told her what it was. I worked as a DJ for about a year, maybe a little less. I was already working as foot audio and figured it wouldn't hurt to pick up something more. Easy going. I don't know how it works in other clubs, but this. 
wasn't a nice club, it was small, kind of dirty and boy did it fucking reek of shitty perfume, sweat, and sex, from the totally no sex allowed VIP room, I hated it there but, it was like $20 per hour and they had to pay me to play their songs, every night. Didn't matter if it was the same or different songs. Amateur night was promoted as amateurs keep all type thing but the uh, amateurs had to rent out stage time from the club and also pay me for music, less than the FT strippers or whatever. There was one girl that always showed up for amateur night and I asked her why she didn't work more nights and become a girl here. She said of she just needed a little bit more extra cash flow for school. And amateur night was always packed. She was one of the few girls for amateur, and it paid more than her working then as one of the girls. It was an interesting time. The manager and owner were chill. The girls were mostly nice. The pay was really nice. I think if it was a high-end club I'd probably still be doing it. Spent three years jing in a strip club. Still go as a customer sometimes, because it's as fun as you make it. Here's a few rules, if you're going to sit and gun a row. Tip. If you're not going to tip, at least be enthusiastic when the dancer pulls off a decent pull trick, and between songs, clap, whistle, woo a little. The scummier the joint, the more likely you'll get a handy in the VIP, or manage to wrangle a date after the club closes. You probably don't want the ones that'll provide that service, but if you find yourself in that situation, wear protection, a full dive suit. The worst I saw, a dancer was late showing up for her song selection and we were doing back to back strippers that night. I've got about a minute left before I announce her, so I pop my head back into the change room to remind her. There she was, one leg up on the counter, removing her tampon. Maintain eye contact, let her know she was up. She told me her songs, and said I'll be there, just cutting the string. I never saw it when it happened. But because the shitter was across the club, there were times where girls pissed or shat in the chain room garbage can. We had some feature acts at the club, Victoria Paris, Kobe Tai, Raquel Dorian, Dita Von Tees, and Jenna Jameson, when she was dating Tommy Lee. I believe there was one or two others, but it was so long ago. Raquel was quite the snob, Jenna was as well, and Tommy came in with her a couple of the times. I had ticks to the crew show. And it was seriously underwhelming. A local Vancouver band Noise Therapy opened for them and they were stellar though. Victoria and Kobe were fantastic. Great tippers, hung out in the booth sometimes. Dita was a diva, insufferable at best. Not a DJ but I managed a strip club in Miami Beach for a very brief time in the mid-90s. I was out of work, and my friend was the DJ. He said the club was looking for a cashier, Dorman. So I went over there and was practically hired on the spot. After a few weeks working the door, not a bouncer, that was another, more intimidating guy. I was promoted to assistant manager. A few weeks after that, the general manager was fired and I was given his job. Yeah, I know. Anyway, I guess the bottom line is that it was a lot of fun for a little while and then it became every bit the train wreck you might expect. I believe there are certain people in support roles, managers bartenders, etc., who are capable of working for longer periods of time in that industry, but I certainly wasn't one of them. After about 11 months I was toast. I only worked three shifts as the DJ in a pinch but normally worked in the kitchen. Honestly the thing that surprised me most was how normal the strippers there was people. Most had their lives together and just soaked up easy money. Sure there was the occasional hot mess that came through but there was also one girl I became friends with that was just working to save money for her study abroad master's scholarship. I hope she's doing good now. She was just an overall rad person. Working at a strip club also kinda ruins the allure of strip clubs. Once you're friendly with the girls it really normalizes the whole experience. Naked girls coming back to the kitchen to take a break and not be ogled and have a normal work small talk kinda kills the whole thing. Hey Amanda how's school going? Yeah, it's a slow night back here so far but seems like you're doing alright out there. My favorites was hearing them say things like well time to go try to get that guy to give me his whole paycheck. 
Partying with strippers though is usually a lot of fun when they aren't on the clock. Edit, was reading through and saw a lot about the music and remembered my favorite was this girl that was super hot but couldn't dance at all as far as I saw, or maybe she just didn't. She requested Cotton Eye Joe and did the sexy walk to the pole and just grabbed the pole and stuck her ass out and smiled, then turned to the other side of the stage and did the same thing. The whole thing just cracked me up. 